Welcome back to the Arbitrage Run Show with your host, Donkey Teeth, and Kevin from Arbitrage Racing. What's happening, Kevin? Hey, Donkey. Excited for today's show. It's a, our maiden voyage, our uh, first guest on the show. It's uh, I've gotten spoiled just having said Jesus to myself, and now i got to share him. Yeah, I think people might be getting tired of, of just having me talk with, with you, so we wanted to spice <laughs> up a little bit, add someone with a little more, uh, a little different knowledge on the game. Yeah. Well, without further ado, let's bring him on. Cryptog, what's happening, man? The uh, the master of Haku. <laughs> hey, guys. How are you? I'm, I'm totally honored. I didn't know I was your first guest. That's so awesome. That's right. I, I hope I, I hope I, well, I guess I can live up to the, 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 um, the, all the other guests you guys have had before. You, you were setting I, the bar, but yeah, I hope I can talk to have you, man. <laughs> yeah, there's no bar. So, yes, yeah. <laughs> Low expectations. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we wanted to have you on. You know, there's, uh, the new update that came out with Haku and um, yeah, as with anything new controversial, everybody's got opinions and wanted to give you a chance to, to come on and talk a little bit about uh, what you guys are doing over there, why you're doing it, clarify some things, address any issues or concerns people are having. But before we get into that, a uh, couple of things, well, we want, we want to intro you and, and let you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how Haku started and then also we wanted to talk about a little bit of Zed news before we dive in on your update. So, uh, you know, just to, to get started here, Cryptog, can you tell our audience a, a little bit about who you are, how you got into Zed, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I, well, my, my, I've doxed myself when we got funding. My real name is Charlie, um, I, uh, but I'm known as uh, Cryptog. I got into Zed in April 2021, uh, mostly as a side project, passion, because I love data. Uh, that's my secret passion. And I love solving puzzles. And this was like the ultimate puzzle of trying to figure out how good horses were. And if, if as those of you guys back then, there was a lot less information known about what a horse was, what what variance was or base ability and all those things. Uh, that really wasn't even known. And so I started building up a whole bunch of data models to figure this stuff out secretly and then built sniping tools that grabbed things off of OpenSea. Uh, in terms of just alerting me, I didn't actually... Um, uh, buy directly. And so I was doing that for a while and having fun. And then I kind of got more in the weeds and kind of realized that like, I, uh, I knew too much and that I, um, also, uh, got like the sniping got more and more competitive with the same people who would just keep on sniping the things right ahead of me. Uh, and so I realized that rather than just playing that game and running upstairs to push the buttons all the time, uh, it was better to just build a tool and democratize it and just get like, put something out there that anyone could do any searches and get updates in real time and be able to buy anything. Um, and so that's kind of what launched uh, Haku. Um, so it started as a passion project. And also just at the same time, I realized that that NFTs in general were going from kind of pictures and, you know, like you see with a crypto kitty to things that have utility, to game pieces, things that are valued, not on how they look, but on the data. Um, and so I had in the back of my head this whole time that there's going to need to be a marketplace where people are valued, where people can search and filter based on the actual real-time data of what it is and what value it's providing versus just what it looks like. And so that also kind of that combination is what um, seeded Haku. And so a little nostalgic uh, talking about this kind of stuff. Before we went live here on the show, we were talking about when each of us got into Zed and you said, uh, Cryptog, you were in April of 2021 and Kevin was too. And I was just uh, probably a couple of weeks before you guys. And I remember back then, and I was trying to, I was racking my mind, trying to remember what the the like very bare bones site was that we used to filter for horses. And I came to it, that Zed Nucleus. Do you, do you remember that, mm -hmm. Kevin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was what I used to snipe off OpenSea back in the day. Probably was racing Cryptog to our to our computer <laughs> when we saw some deals. Yeah, yeah I, knew, I mean, it was updating every five minutes, so I knew that. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I, I mean, I knew Zed Nucleus uh, very well. And, and you know, I, I wanted, you know, for me, it was more like that wasn't fast enough. I wanted something faster and, and that you could filter more. Um, which is how, how, did, how did you come up with the name Haku? Is there like an origination to that? Well, I mean, you can think of it the name as a combination of hawking your goods. So like trying to sell your things as well as searching like a hawk. Um, it also uh, it goes really well with haiku, which you guys may have seen uh, that we, we kind of take that as part of our personality. Uh, but honestly, I, I had start, thought of that idea from 15 years, not for this company, but for another e-commerce company 15 years ago. And I just had the name. And so I'm like, okay, I couldn't, I spent a lot of time trying to think of a name and couldn't. And then I was like, this is perfect. So mm -hmm. um that's what started it. 
Awesome. So how much, uh, I know that you're busy over there at Haku. How much time do you have for Zed now? Do you play a lot? Do you race a lot? Breed? What is your... I re- so, so when Breeding 2. I was a Breeding 1.0 person. I liked the lottery ticket aspect. When Breeding 2.0 came and you had to have pretty good horses to start. I, I think it's changed and become more random as people found out. But like when it started, the first two months, it was like, well, you need two really good horses to get a new good horse. And I was like... My good horse was variable is a variance horse and, and got nerfed because variance got nerfed, not because that horse did. Um, and then I just was like, I just don't want to play that, that style. I, I kind of, uh, so I used to love the breeding part. Um, I think other people like it more now. It's just a different thing. Uh, and then for just racing, I used to race a bunch. It's harder. It requires more time now. And I just am so busy with with building the, the platform out that it's just hard to do. I did participate in the exclusive. I do dabble into some of the tournaments. So I did the exclusive one most recently. Um, I've done some Genesis ones, uh, but it's hard. It's gotten much harder and you have to be much more savvy than than that even six months ago. Yeah, Kevin is the savvy one in, in the group over here. <laughs> um so yeah it is it is tough and we've been saying it from the start of breeding 2.0 when when everybody was complaining off the bat about the lottery going away i mean it's hard to judge it without having a working racing ecosystem to get give it a fair um shake so i am really curious to see what it looks like i think they're going to end up tweaking breeding too but um fair points there for sure we did want to ask you before we dive in on the Z news and the updates what is your long-term vision for haku and how does zed specifically fit into that vision yeah i mean so yeah first of all i I should say i am i'm wearing my you know premier zed clothing here uh but uh um like when if you guys can look when we took funding over a year about a year ago uh, the whole vision of this is to build a marketplace for utility and gaming NFTs. And so the focus is building a market. You know, when you look at marketplaces today, almost all of them are focused on the NFTs that are more like collectibles and PFPs, where it's all about the aesthetics and the floor price and the rarity. That's what you value it on, right? What does it look like? What's the rarity of it? Of like, do you have laser eyes? And how many How many are there? If there's only 10,000, how popular it is? What's the floor price? And I realize that, you know, the, my vision is my, is that um, that's only one subset of what NFTs could be. It just like it's only one subset of what assets are. A lot of NFTs are also valued as by, by utility. And Zed tokens are just like that. Horses are valuable because some horses are great racehorses and actually can generate money, can, can generate return. They can win for you. They can do things. Um, and those utility NFTs are not based on what they look like. They're based entirely on the data. And the real-time data. There really was no marketplace out there that did that. All the marketplaces are focused on these on rarity and floor price. If you look at everything they do, it's all about those di- different attributes. Um, and so uh, our mission has been to build out this marketplace for these other types of assets that that have been ignored, that are valued not on the rarity but on the on the actual utility of what they're doing. Um, and Zed was a perfect example of that. It was a good blending of what I, my, my passion of of kind of getting into Zed with this other idea of this thing of, of this of tokens being valued by the data. Um, and so moving forward, we're going to, we've expanded now to five games. We have a couple other ones that are hidden that will be appearing shortly. Um, so we're going to continue to expand and build out this ecosystem so that people can have a whole variety of different games to choose from. Eventually we'll go beyond games, hopefully to other types of components and NFTs that are valued based on the data. Um, and it's, so it's really thinking more like that front of like, how do you get a quick snapshot of how valuable this is? How do you delve in a little bit to be able to make buying and selling decisions. Um, Zed as kind of our flagship and original one, it's, it's close to our heart. We're, we're, you know, we do more for Zed than any other game uh, or any other thing out there. Uh, and so we're, we're you know, very excited about it. We still continue to, to build more to, to help Zed as well. But that, that's been our focus is, is really looking at this from a marketplace perspective. Yeah, and it was such a, a huge void before Haku in the, the marketplace realm. Kevin and I were talking about it uh, on last week's show when we kind of teased that you were coming on, how terrible it was trying to filter through things on OpenSea. Like you had to have four different windows open and then you know, still it was it was hard to figure out if you were looking at the same horses and refreshing metadata and everything, right, Kevin? Yeah, it was, it was horrible. Plus, OpenSea has its own slew of issues with uh, like scams and potential links you could click or fake open sea sites. So Haku is such a welcome addition, um, still is, but especially when it came out, it was just groundbreaking in terms of filtering and having all the data to track. So yeah, for a while we were driving a lot of the open sea traffic for Zed. 
Um, and so that was, we're like, well, and, and just basically giving OpenSea all the, you know, they were just taking it and using it as, they were just being a marketplace where you just bought and sold, you didn't do any searching. Yeah, that's the other thing was like the, the fees for you, for you guys are so reasonable um, comparing that to like OpenSea, um, considering all, all that you guys do. So it, it really was a weird setup where you would find a horse using your site but then go there and just give them the, the fee. Made we, no we, sense whatsoever. Our so. pitch is that we were running an unintentional nonprofit at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think everybody in the community appreciates what you guys have done, regardless of, you know, if they're using your site to analyze the data uh, as far as racing and, and breeding goes, everybody ends up at Haku to, to buy their horses. Now it's like, it's one-stop shop. So um, yeah, I, I think I speak for everybody when, when I say we all appreciate what you guys have built and your contribution to the community. Um, so before we dive in on this update, I'll keep teasing it here, but there was some big news this week and I'm going to pull up the, the Z announcement and we can chat about it here real quick for a couple minutes. So concurrent tournaments are coming and I don't know if you saw this, Cryptog. Uh, well, I think I put it in the notes. So you probably have seen it if you hadn't seen it until now. But um, there's going to be a free tournament and a paid tournament every day starting next week. And one third of the normal daily prize pool will go to that free tournament and two thirds will go to the paid tournament. And the free tournaments, they're going to be all 12 payout structures. So that they're going to be pretty small relative payouts compared to the paid tournament, which is going to have top three payout structure. It looks like the free tournaments are going to be more conditional formatting versus the paid, uh, at least at, from the start, we've got the first two-week schedules here, are going to be more of those open, uh, in-class racing, Fibonacci, keep on winning, pity point type stuff. Uh, Kevin, I'll kick it over to you first here as the the Z Racing guru. What uh, is your initial reaction to this development? I'm always a fan when they're trying new things. I think it's, it's very easy to see something and then dissect it in terms of how you would have done it, but it's not like they're guaranteeing this in perpetuity, right? They're trying something new. It's a test. Um, it's something people have wanted for a long time, being able to run two tournaments at, at one time. So, I mean, I, I love it on the surface. And then when you start to dig into the, the economics of it, I think there was some good thought put into how do we reward people who are doing paid racing and actually putting skin in the game, giving that two thirds of the pot um, and getting rid of B tournament or the B bracket, I think they call it. Um, at least keeps the price pools fairly solid for, for that group uh, because it is a grind to, to do all the paid racing. If you have multiple horses, I think everybody knows waiting in class for your distance to show up, um, trying to figure out if you run three and now you have two more queued up or do you, it's just, it's hard to keep track when you have a lot of horses. Um, and then flipping it a little bit different to the free one, I think the big talking point on Twitter has been one bracket, but it's all 12 for every every tournament, which I think in the current setup, it is a little discouraging because that's kind of like playing for, for small amounts of money. But if you think about still the amount of work it takes to qualify for a free tournament, I know personally there's going to be times where I'm just going to want to race paid as it's stimulated by this daily tournament. And I'm going to keep the ready, set, booms out of free tournaments if, if they're even eligible because I know it's very segmented in the free tournament. So I think it's important to remember there is an opportunity cost now with stamina to where it may not be worth running a great horse in this free tournament to make five, ten dollars. So while you feel slighted because you don't have the upside, it's probably going to be an easier field in those free tournaments. Yeah, that makes sense. Cryptoc, do you have any initial thoughts on this without seeing it in action yet? I mean, my initial thought is they've been talking about concurrent tournaments for a long time. So I'm happy they're finally moving forward with it. And I actually think it's good it in terms of if it just so it depends on what type of horse you have. If you've got winning champion horses, it's bad because it's diluting the, the pool. Um, if you don't and you've got media and your and your broader audience of kind of okay good horses, it can be really good because it broadens the pool. Um, to me, it's interesting that you can race the same horse in both open and paid at the same time. And I think that will that was one of the more controversial things. Um, I I personally think if Zed's goal is to spread out the number of people who are really excited about it, they may want to separate that. Like it's a controversial thing to say that, but um, then you at least get people, as you said, Kevin, who might be wanting some type of feeling of winning without having buying the, the most expensive horses. Um, and so I think that's good. I think the other interesting thing is what's going to happen now to regular free races, because they're kind of, 
if all the free races are going to be for tournaments are conditional and then you have paid, um, I'm curious if they're going to dump regular free races. Cause what is, what is the use of that besides padding your, your stats and downclassing? Yeah. Um, is, is there another use? And, and I think that would actually be a good thing because then it might simplify certainly all this stuff. One of the questions that people are asking is, you know, how do you get people to not pad their stats? This could be a good way to do that. Yeah, I think I think with the the free, you're basically going to see it used exactly that way. Where you're going to have, if you have paid uh, tournaments every single day, suddenly tanking actually becomes valuable again, right? Like like you need to run your five tournament races and paid, but then you need to run your your five, six, seven with the rest of your races just to maintain that class and ensure that you can still qualify for your paid tournaments well. So that that's another way why people won't be running these segmented frees. If you have a paid racer and it's not a true class one winner you're going to have to pick either down class or double dip in the free races. So I, I imagine if they got rid of down classing, I mean, that, they've always wanted to get rid of down. I mean, that's controversial, right? But imagine they got rid of regular free races. That could yeah. be. That's how it used to be. I mean, talking about like the OG stuff, like back in April, you used to have a free race that popped and actually gave you money every, I don't know what it was, every hour or so in class. They one. were like on cycles. I remember you yeah. said that, that you had an alarm set and I did too. Yeah. You and I, before we even knew each other, we were in like every single free race. That's how you knew we had a problem. Yeah, we set alarms, had to had to see if the distance was one that we wanted to tank. And then, I mean, mathematically, plenty of the times, two thirds of the time, it wasn't a distance and you just kind of had to wait for the next one, reset your alarm. But that was when you really had to work to down class. Um, or you just do a paid race and it was guaranteed to yep. kind of find what you want, but you paid for it. So you actually had to do the math and figure out if it was efficient enough to do that. So I think it would go back to that way. It would make a lot of horses shoot up to class one. Obviously um, the best horses could still tank efficiently and probably turn a profit, but yeah, that would be controversial if they, if they did something like that. I would be surprised just because I think they're fairly close to the new fix for the class system. Yeah. That it'd be just chaos to do something that controversial um, but it sure would be interesting and make for an interesting episode for us yeah definitely yeah i was trying to win those free races by the way i was never tanking in them kevin so oh you're you're, you're welcome you're welcome that's well, right you weren't a tanker you were just run everything out the class one back in yeah, the early days when they first introduced free it was 10 percent of the races were free and we hawkers one of the things we took a stand on was no free races it was only database unpaid i don't know if you guys remember that and we only switched later when mm -hmm. when it became 80 90 percent free and we're like okay we can't continue this um but uh people have always been using free to, to buffer and now they're using six horse races to do that too which is why we you know one of the things we changed was separating that out yeah you know hawk uh crypt dog i almost called you haku there we'll just call you haku you're you you are you are the man <laughs> We have, a, um, we have a team of nine now, so it's not just me, you know. <laughs> well, you know what? That was the other question. How many are on your team over there now? Yeah, we have nine people, and almost all are engineers. Um, and you, you guys all know Bryce, too, as he's, he's a you know key member of our team in terms of helping do community management. But we are, you know, very engineering-driven. Um, I've switched a lot from doing engineering myself to doing more of the product stuff. Um, I mean, it was doing, obviously, both before, but but um, it's it, a yeah, great team. And we're able to do so work so much quicker, and particularly with this new platform, we'll talk about that in a second, as to why we did it. Um, we're, we're just able to just iterate really quickly now. Gotcha. Um, yeah, so we're, before I got on the tangent there, you mentioned something, and I, I think it's interesting because you give this perspective of the this new concurrent format from your point of view being bad for champion racehorses and good for the little guy or whatever you want to call it. And then you go out on Twitter and you see a bunch of differing viewpoints. And I think that that just kind of speaks to like, none of us really know until we see it in action, like how it all shakes out and what behaviors they're able to, to squeeze out of us. Cause that's really developing a game is all about incentivizing the behavior that they want to see to make it a, a healthy ecosystem where there's places for every, everybody to play and have fun. And we'll see if this achieves it or if it doesn't. I guess the the last thing to say on this before wrapping it up is what Kevin said, that this is really, it's just a Band-Aid uh, to kind of get us to the finish line here of the, the new class system and progression that's coming. So, you know, hopefully people don't overreact if they don't like it, you know, take a little Z break, maybe play with it and see if it's better than, than you think. Um, but everything's going to be changing soon regardless. And I, I don't know what that ends up looking like if this kind of, I mean, there's going to be concurrent tournaments, but it, it might be totally different. I would think it's going to be totally different than what we've got uh, coming here. Right, Kevin? 
Yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be very different. But, yeah, the concurrent tournaments needed to be something we could do, right? Like you want to be obviously able to run these big bracket-style tournaments with uh, different categories. So that was a good um, milestone to hit. Um, personally, I, I just – tournaments – My how I envision tournaments in the future is going to be like – almost like you're on DraftKings or something with, with sit and go style poker style tournaments. Um, that's going to be the future in my eyes. And if you're actually paying to enter and do those, that just opens up a whole new avenue of, of kind of choose your own adventure and ways Zed can, can pay off um, the tournament structures. Right. We all get so like stuck in the moment and everybody is like, there's just so much like a passion and emotion going on about changes that happen and when you're able to like kind of step back, like we were here for a minute and look back at like what free races used to be and what Zed used to be and where we're at now, like it hasn't even been a year since we had the first, maybe it was like right about a year now we had the first tournament and it was one weekly huge tournament. It was actually like two weeks that it ran for, but there was no, no such thing as a tournament before that. And now there's people arguing about these little facets of how free money is being given away, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's it's crazy. Just thinking back, like yeah, to last year when you had queues, right? Remember the queues, and you would have like eight hour. You'd register a race, oh, and eighteen hours, for eight hours, and like yeah, there's no stamina, but you could run. Yeah, sometimes it went to twelve plus. So you could run like I don't know, basically one time a day, and you get all excited in a race, and then you had to wait twelve hours, set an alarm just so you don't miss the race. That was. It's funny though. Ever people sometimes still call that the heyday of where you would do that. You have this anticipation for eight hours, and then you'd be like, hey, and then you you, know, you do it again. People just forget. Yeah, they forget. And it's the same ones who cry for odds to come back. Like that was glorious. But it, I mean, we'd have a whole slew of issues if if odds were still around, right? Like it's people just remember what they want to remember and forget all the headaches, which is even more reason to not have the headache right now in the moment because your your memory would be very different. Agreed. I, I mean, and, and I think the heyday kind of alludes to how many people and like all the hype and excitement because it was a different time. Right. But even with that comes the headache of hype. Right. Like it's attractive to scammers and it was rampant. Uh, I, you know, knock on wood, but we haven't seen any huge Zed scams. It's like Kevin brought this up. There was a big uh, somebody got hacked. It was. um MJ, right? He got hacked, mm -hmm. and they didn't even touch his, his head horses. I was like, I don't even want them, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it sucks. That sucks getting hacked. Uh, uh, we feel for you. Um, let's move on, guys. Let's move on to the update to Haku. What we really came to talk about. So you kind of talked a little bit about it, Cryptog. But what was the the driving force behind the update? You kind of said that this is now allowing you to iterate much quicker. Is there more to it than that? Yeah. So when we built this, uh, you know, when we built, you know, I, I told you before, our vision and focus is a marketplace for utility and gaming NFTs. And so the very, very first version for Zed is we just lap patched on a marketplace type components onto the existing Haku. Um, but that was totally custom built for Zed. It was hard coded for all these Zed things. And we, in order to build out a broader platform, we had to kind of build something that was, everything now is, is in like a Lego block style where you can build components on top of each other. Um, and so we've been building that for the last six to eight months. And so the, the switch of Zed was honestly moving Zed onto this new platform. Uh, it does a lot. I mean, there's a couple of things that obviously we had to give up to do it and we'll talk about those, um, but it allows us to kind of totally be able to, if you look at all the things we did on Zed, it's all now configurations. So changing a, adding a variable to filter in the past would take 14 files in like a full day. And now we can do it in like 15 minutes. So, you know, we, people were talking about breeding decay of the parent, you know, checking for stud finder for breeding decay. We can now add that we were adding that this week because it was like super trivial to add. Um, so it allows us to do a lot of different things, which is why we did it. One is that we can build for every game, build the platform and have it work for every game at the same time. When we add a drop 10% feature, which people really like, uh, it goes across all games as opposed to building something could custom for Zed and then having to custom replicate it for every other game. Um, when we add new types of graphs or things like that, we can add it for Zed and we can add it for other games. And it allows us to just build at a much quicker pace than we're able to do than we were able to do with Zed um, and be more scalable and be, you know, so the, the, that's the good news. The down bad news is that there were a couple things like side little features that were nice to have um, or, or were just, you know, good little enhancements um, that we couldn't fit into that type of building block right now. Um, and so we said, okay, well, we will try to find other ways to make it even better. 
Um, but you know, some of these things were just hard to do in this type of new component framework. And so we had to make some kind of tough product management choices. And sometimes we did it for different reasons. I'm happy to go through each of those um, and talk because uh, I know a lot of people talked about it. We also blogged uh, about about ta about 10 of them of what changes they were, what we've done in, in, uh, in return. Um, some of them we were sad to hear have go, but we, we wanted to, you know, we realized that sometimes you have to make that change to make it work so that moving forward, we can move much faster. Yeah, it makes sense. Kevin, I know you've played around with it a little bit over there on the Haku. What uh, is your initial reaction to the update? Are you enjoying it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, it looks sleeker, I guess I would, I would say. And then I, I see your point around it being more like integratable to other games, right? Like I, I don't play many other games um, aside from Zed taking all my time, but I can, I see when you like go to the left and you have the banner and you can, you can click different, different games and then they have very similar formats. Um, I really love what you said about it being more nimble now, um, because I do think with a game like Zed or any blockchain game, things are always changing and different stats become relevant. Like you mentioned, six gate races um, need to be filtered. So being nimble and being able to do something like that in a trivial manner, rather than having to wait or dedicate a full day plus of resources to do it is, is huge. So that's things like I had no idea. Um, it freed up that much like efficiency for you. So Makes perfect sense, but yeah, I like the layout. It was a good combination of some changes, but it still feels mostly like the hockey I know and love. We, we try to do as much as we could to keep it all pretty similar. And I would say, oh, pretty much everything except for the stud finder, which we hacked in for just Zed, is a configuration. It's like a JSON file. Uh, the stud finder we hacked in because if we removed the stud finder, there would have been rioting. Um, so we we knew that that one, like that, that was the thing I was like, okay, we have to put that in. That sucks, but. Um, but the rest of it is all very configurable. Uh, the other, you know, I, I can tell you more vision stuff as we go on. Um, but uh, what one little teaser is that one of the plans from the beginning has been the ability for people to eventually one day customize what they have, what data they have. And this gets us one big step closer where now, for example, this says win rate, paid win rate, and number of races. Imagine if you could select which of those three variables you want to have appear, which three data points on a per user basis, um, and which, which, you know, icons. Um, and so your graph, your display could be totally different than other people's. Um, and so that's part of our vision of just allowing people to really customize it. That's not there. We don't have the the front end of that yet, but this new framework really helps us get very close to that. Yeah, that's cool. That, that's going to be something that that, uh, that people will love. You know, I, I think that there's, um, I, I can speak to the change uh, using different tools because we've talked about it on this show. And I was talking to Kevin about it before we did the show. Like I've always been a know your horses guy. Like that's what I was like raised on after the Z nucleus time. And so it's just like, everything is where I am looking for it. I know where it's at and I, and I go there. And so like, even when it's broken, I'm like still going back there trying to get my horses to work. It's like, come on, just load. Like I know where things are going to be. And then I end up going to, to Haku or, or Z lead, um, which, you know, they've, they've kind of mimicked the know your horses feel. So I know Kevin uses that too sometimes, but I think that it's just, it's really interesting the way that, that we are as humans, like we've become conditioned to, I know I can find this here and there. And it's like, I, as nice as like Haku has been and all the information's there, it's just not where I'm used to it. And so yeah. those old habits die hard. And so I think, yeah, when you change these little things, it's like, overwhelming for for us as humans which is very strange but i am um i am definitely enjoying the new look to the marketplace like i've, I've always used the, the haku marketplace know your horses never as much as i like know your horses their marketplace never worked like haku's right it was always uh never updating and it wasn't quite the same so you know i think that that it takes a little bit of effort and time to to get used to new things but um, everybody will if, if they don't have a choice, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I feel bad. Like we, we actually did a little diagram. I think, I don't know if that um, you guys have it visible of the smiley faces of just showing the, the the level of going through change from like confusion, anger, frustration, and then surprise and then like and love. And uh, I mean, it's like, I've gone through sites where they make a major change. It drives me crazy. I empathize. Um, even when you, know your, you mentioned Know Your Horses, they did a major change and everyone was so up in arms. Um, for the first three weeks, 
Uh, people don't, it's exactly what you said. You're used to, you've built a habit of where things are and that changes and, and that sucks. Um, we, we didn't really, we did the best we could in terms of doing that over. We knew we had to move this in to, because that was part of that in order to be able to iterate at the faster pace, uh, moving forward. And so we had to make those sacrifices and, um, you know, we're hoping people just go for that ride and understand that it's constantly, you know, it allows us to constantly keep on getting better on what we're doing. Yeah, I can, can definitely appreciate it. Kevin, anything else to, to add here on that topic? No, I, one one question I have just out of selfishness. So if we if we type in a, a horse's name in the search bar, is there anything that prevents being able to have like the drop down where you can click the horse? At least I, I haven't seen that. If so, and maybe that's a whole different issue, but that's one we, thing. We've never know, had that. Yeah, I think you could click it and then, I don't know. It's like a pet peeve where I do that and then I type in the exact name and there's no other horse name that, and it still like requires me to do this and then go to a different page. Whereas if I like exactly match the horse's name. Oh, I see. I can go straight to it. Yeah. I think the old Haku had that optimization and we may, we may put that back in. We didn't have that in the beginning of this um, where if it matches the name exactly, go to, go to the page. Gotcha. Uh, That's, I think everybody has their like what changed and what bugs you with the change. Like that, that was mine. I was like typing in and boom's not the best one. Cause there's a, there's like ready set boom tone. There's all of them. So that will never work unless it's the drop down. but some of the more unique names, I'm used to typing it and it goes straight to that page and it takes me to this page of like 10 horses and half of them don't even really apply to that, to that name. So I'll I've been using this for over four weeks. The first um, two weeks was really annoying on that. And now I don't even notice it. Now it's actually kind of fun because I get to see all the horses that are named similar. Um, yeah. As long as my horse is in the top left, I just know to click the top left. That, top that's left. fair. All right. Maybe I'll, I'll adjust and, uh, and power through yeah, it. But. Like there's so many things like that. I was like, Oh, annoyed by There's still things I'm annoyed on it to be you know, quite clear. I, I really, I like the quick, you know, when you do quick view, it pops up. We had to make that choice. Um, I liked it going down a little bit more. We're going to re try to find a way to make it faster because I don't feel it's quick enough. Um, but, you know, those are like, yeah, I, I, I'm with you on some of these things where I go through and do it. But uh, on other ones, I've just, I thought I'd be so upset and then I just don't even remember it anymore. Like, I yeah. So I guess uh, I got a question here on the process. Like as you have a bunch of people saying similar things that they're looking for and they miss. Uh, are there any of them that you guys have taken right away and been like, yeah, you know what, that was a miss and we need to add that back. Or is it more of, well, let's see how pe people feel in, you know, seven, 10 days, maybe two weeks. And if it's still something that people are, you know, calling for, then we look at it or, is it just kind of a lot of it just like, well, this is, is what you get. <laughs> the, one, the one big one that we added back was the, you can see it on there, which is the color, which we were surprised that people, so many people cared about color um, and the um, breeding reset date, which is right after it. So that whole line, that whole line is actually new on that page um, and the not new, new. And we just didn't realize how many people were actively, I, I actively used it. Actually, Bryce doesn't use that part at all. Uh, no one else, we had, we had about 40 beta testers. We didn't hear any complaints in the beta test on it. Um, and then, you know, we got, a, we got hammered, uh, on those two things. So we just, you know, those were an area where we adapted. Uh, there are some other ones where it's extra clicks. Those are ones where I feel like you get used to the new version and you're just not used to it right now. Um, and, uh, and so we're looking, we're always, you know, we're always constantly tweaking and, and improving and trying to improve on things. Um, but our, you know, again, our focus is also just on a quick snapshot, getting people to be able to get to that as fast as possible with a quick snapshot of things versus like a race analyzer to figure out how to race your horse. There are so many great tools for that. Um, mm -hmm. We don't, we can't be everything for every, you know, for everybody. Um, uh, but our goal is to really help you make a decision as to buy or sell. Yeah. So, be the best at what you're going to be. Right. And if people want other stuff, they can go elsewhere. It, it's part of the reason idea. also we, we don't want to over, you know, our emphasis also people really appreciate the cleanliness of the site and the fact it's not overwhelming with data. Um, and so we're really trying to be cautious of that. So like people are, have been asking us to add five or six points of data to the, and it just would clutter the whole thing up. So we're, we're really trying to also be clear. There's a lot of, tra every time you make a decision, there's a trade-off on, on it. And so we're also trying to be like, okay, we really want to have this still be a clean interface. So somebody who doesn't play the game, doesn't look at it and go, oh my God, okay, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. You, you know, I guess w while we're talking about the things that uh rubbed us the wrong way at first year before we start talking about things that we like maybe we did this backwards um the, the thing that i missed was the having the birth date here and our buddy keith from crimson 
brought that same thing up to me when I told him that we were going to be uh, talking to you. I said, you got any questions? And he said, you know, can we bring back the birth date here? And I was kind of like, you know, I missed that at first. And then I realized it says right here, breed 2.0. And that was the only reason I was ever looking at the birth date. And he's like, yeah, I guess that's the only reason I was looking at it too. So I think that there are some things like that where you just realize, well, the, the information is being shown in a, a different kind of way, right? But um, things that I do like, you asked me this, Cryptog, before we jumped on. I, I like the new functionality with being able to bid in Zed token. We immediately sold a horse in Zed like the day after this update launched, which was cool. And then I saw somebody on Twitter when we posted for questions talking about the filters for um, parents and grandparents when you're searching the marketplace. And I hadn't even known that. I still haven't even played around with it. We haven't been uh, looking through the marketplace a ton lately. So I think that that's a huge improvement to be able to look for a parent, two parents that have above 10% win rate in paids kind of a thing that that really will start to narrow you down, right? Yeah, no, there's a whole bunch. I mean, we took the, the old version had a limited amount of parent searches you could do. This new version allows us to basically you can search anything on the parents that you're searching for the child, which yeah, is let crazy. Me, let me pull that up uh, in the marketplace and just show where that is. Um, but Crypto, you know, we wanted to ask you, what's your your favorite part of the this update? Are there any features that really uh, kind of I mean, first of all i just love the fact that it is like we've it's all running the, the the things that we're doing for zed and all these games are all running on the same platform that blows my mind that is just like a basically configuration files um i i uh I, i'm surprised more people aren't more excited about the, the profile section um honestly where you can customize your own profile page of it um i you know a lot of people like the drop 10 percent. that was a fun little thing we were able to just add so you can go to my items there I don't know if you've done that before. So this shows you how many horses, how many, it shows you you guys have played Red Village. Uh, you can also go to your name. So go to the top right uh, corner of the little like thing. You can, I don't know if you've seen all the things you can add on edit profile. Um, you can add your own, your own slug. So you can have your own URL that goes to you. So it's now, so I'm, you go to hawkus.com slash you slash cryptog and that's mine. Um, you can have your own Twitter and discord. Uh, your own image, your own background image. So there's a whole bunch of functionality that we're able to add there, which is kind of, I, I think is really neat. Um, I'm going to go through the other things that we have here. Uh, we've talked about people like transferring, uh, the just the amount of data that we're able to provide, I think is super interesting. Um, you guys have seen the bid notifications. I don't know if you noticed that you can, you can customize when you get notified for bids. Yeah, I'm looking at the right here. I love that. Um, some of that was there before. Some of that is new. Let me just go to the, we, we added, we had to come up with 28 haiku to talk about all the different things we added for this release that were not in the old one. Um, so I don't know if you guys have, if, uh, if you guys have seen that, uh, you know, you guys probably got invaded on our Twitter with, with all the different features. Um, but I will go, let me just see if there are really fast, if there are other ones I'm missing right here. Um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of putting in the recent data as, aspect. I've always been annoyed that you have a win rate, but your horse's win rate was from December of last year. Uh, so now you can filter based on recent data. Uh, I think it's super interesting. And class one win rate, which I think is also really important because you can have a win rate in class six and not have a class one. Um, so I think, it, you know, some of those things I think are just uh, really neat. Uh, we just added, you know, because we're able to add quickly, we added the full transaction history. I don't know if you guys seen that now where you can see transfers and bids and listings, um, the history of those. Um, so, and I, do you guys know you can do the counts now? This is the other, this is a fun thing that I think is totally fun if you're into just searching at things. So if you go... Uh, uh, scroll, yeah, there's the history, but you guys don't, there's the transfer history now. So you can see if somebody's transferring it between themselves, like you guys are. Yeah, I um, see that. Uh, if you go uh, to the um, scroll up to the, and then click on Z, uh, the, 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 the Z horse icon, or just, yeah, there we go. Over here. So do you guys know on the top, on the right there, it tells you how many results there are? So you can actually go to all horses and do any search, and it'll tell you the total amount now. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a cool feature. So that's fun. That's so something I, I that just, no, your horses used to have that, and I, I loved it. So I hadn't even played around with this much, but that's a great addition. Pe people have been asking, you know, and these are just the types of things that we're able to add each week as we're doing this. 
and we can add it once and have it go across the whole platform. So it just makes it so much easier now because we can have it work for everything at once. It's also yeah. cool. One thing like you have all items as well, right? So it doesn't have to be a listing and you can filter and like, Hey, I wonder how many buterins with this much win rate have made this much money. And you'd be like, yeah, Miraho is number one buterin, something like that. It's just, it's so cool to look at uh, if you're just looking for a quick list. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it, it like, it's something people have asked for for a long time. We finally found a way to get it to work performantly. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, so there's just a bunch of new functionality uh, and so, you know, it's funny it, if we had taken, now that we added any of this, if we take it away, people would be really upset. But, you know, now that we've added it, you know, you can always add things and people are excited, but when you take them away, then, then, uh, even if it's small people, uh, pe people get used to the old, the, to, to the other stuff. So, um, we, you know, this just lets us iterate much faster, yeah. um, is, is the main thing. That's awesome. Um, I, I really like you basically just get to play in your guys' database and, and fiddle around. We should ask a couple of questions from Twitter. We're, we've already gotten a little long here, but real quick rapid fire here. Uh, since we asked people for questions, I don't want to not ask any of them. Uh, Ringleader asked, since Ancestry has become a, a big deal, particularly for unraced horses, have you considered any design opportunities to better showcase this? To make it easier to identify good blood. I mean, I guess you you have that filter for grandparents and and parents. I, I don't know if he's looking for something more here. Maybe you know uh, there there are other sites like like KYH that have a good ancestry tables, um, and, and we're looking at that. That's not you know we have to figure out a way to get it to work. The, the question is, do we have a display under the family tab, uh, right. which is easier for us, ironically, than to do it in the. Um, you know, it, the one, the dream is to have it so you could filter by it. Uh, that, that becomes really challenging. Um, and so that's the reason we haven't done that is it's, it's technically challenging to have it update every single time one of your children race um, or grandchildren. Um, but uh, it is something we know that that is a, a criteria that people look at is like how good of a breeder is this, um, is this horse. So we're aware of it and we're, you know, I think it's a really good suggestion. Um, but I, I don't know the timeline on that. I wouldn't, uh, you know, it, it's something we're looking at to try to figure out how we could do it. One of the other questions uh, was if this area here, if you can see where I'm at, where it says listings and sales and, and items and that could be displayed up here so that you can see it kind of from any page that you're at instead of kind of having to click back to that. So if it was like still up here when you, you shifted, is there, is that something that could be done or is there a hurdle with that? So you can click on the Z horse, that word that says Z underscore horse in the thumbnail. Nope, uh, right up there towards the top, right there. That takes you back um, to that section. Uh, we have, you know, you can't just show listing sales, all items at the very top, just because you don't know which game. Uh, and for people at some point might be playing, I mean, some of you guys, yeah, I, I just saw in your wallet, you have champions. Right, so some people play both Zed and the Red Village, and if we did listings, we wouldn't know where. Now on the detail page, it, it might make more sense to have that, um, but on on uh, you know we, we can look at that as a UI enhancement. But that that's why we kind of put it down where it was because we also don't know are you searching for a horse or a skin, um, even on that on that page. So we wanted to have the relevance of okay, you're searching for a horse, and here's the other information. Oh, by the way, skins. That's another thing I'm excited about the fact that we can support multiple types of collections in the same game. That always drove me crazy about OpenSea, to be honest, is that you had every single collection was totally different section. Yeah, what if uh, what if when you hover over here on this stuff, there's like other drop downs that come? So like, like you said, th this is kind of segmented. So this is for all collections, right? If you go over here and hover over Zed and then there's Zed listings and sales and that kind of stuff, um, potential solution, no? Yeah, it could be. It could be. This, that, that left side isn't just showing Zed. It, every, um, it can go up to five games big. So for people, again, who play might play multiple games. Yes, yeah, so they um, could hover over any of them and then have... Yeah, it could hover. I, I don't, you know, the, the double hover also becomes like a, a, you know, challenge, the double hover menu where you have to hover to one and the other because you always miss it. Um, but I, I, I get the point that people want an easier way to kind of go back. Um I think it's like saving clicks, you know, and I think because a lot of people in Zed are developers themselves and have gotten so into that. I mean, I've worked with software developers before and everything is about how do we save you clicks? Because when you're doing these actions over and over and over again, it really adds up. You know, if, if I could save four clicks 10 million times, <laughs> that's a whole lifetime, right? <laughs>
Yeah, no, it, it, it's totally true. It's true. I mean, you know, if people have what we've found in the past is a lot of people made bookmarks for the specific searches they're doing anyway. Uh, and so then just going and clicking listings would be annoying because they would have to refilter. Um, and so, you know, because it wouldn't go back to just their listings, it would go back to the generics listings of everything. Um, and so, you know, one thing we do encourage people is to bookmark. I mean, we did we did blow away the old bookmarks with this new change, but we only do that once, you know, in a long time. So, um, uh, you know, the bookmark should work. You know, if you if you save a filter, you can just grab the URL of what you have and you can reuse that. Uh, can you show if a horse was uh, bred from decayed parents somehow? I, I would love to show that. Um, so first of all, Zed's API doesn't have any indication on that. All they tell you is if the parent is decayed. Um, there are sites that try to guess that and they guess that based on like, oh, this horse was the ninth horse bred. Um, I am skeptical that that is 100% accurate based on my experience with uh, Zed in the past. Um, just in terms of their data, sometimes gets off kilter when it goes to, from blockchain data. So sometimes things get swapped and your eighth horse and ninth horse may get swapped in terms of their, their data. Um, in the past, when we used to compute class data before it was opaque, before like they did the whole, I used to, and I'd say in probably one out of every hundred to one out of every 200 horses, the class data was wrong. Like they, the rating was wrong. Um, and no one noticed except that when you're computing it all the time and then people would complain to us that it didn't match that and we had all the data. Um, and we knew exactly how to compute it. So it, my, my point is not anything against Ed. They just are dealing with something crazy like the blockchain. Um, and so I would rather, my, my vision on that is that hopefully Zed adds that to their API. Um, and then it's really easy for, if, the, if Zed put it into their API for horses, it would be trivial for us to add. Um, but I'm afraid to do it without that because I don't think it's, I, I'm worried that there may be some switcheroos going on. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. It would have to be, a little more complex where you're looking at like all horses bred after March 17th, 2022. And then it would have to like sequentially order them based on like the actual mint time of that token kind of a thing. And yeah. Yeah. And that then like a back, bit of a task. Yeah. It was well, not yet. Yeah, right. So you'd have to kind of compute, do this kind of complex computation. And then if two horses are minted a block apart, which can happen when you've got like people. Male, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, on a mail, then, you know, it could be that one of them was received earlier than the other one and gotten like, it, you know, so it would be great if Zed provided that information um, of who was decayed. That, that would be like, well, so please, Zed. Yeah, transparency <laughs> is, is good for everybody. Uh, a couple more quick ones. I know we've gotten long here. Is there any chance of a uh, stat padding filter? We kind of talked about this. Hopefully it won't be a thing in the future. Uh, we'll see though. Yeah. I mean, I, I would love it. It's hard. Uh, it's hard to know exactly when people, you know, you can kind of guess what tournaments are going on concurrently or not. I think it hopefully goes away with this new change. Um, that I said, like my vision is that they get rid of free racing, honestly, and just do, um, open free racing and paid. And I think that honestly would help get rid of the, the stats padding. Um, I think otherwise it's, it's, it can be hard, particularly now that you have multiple concurrent tournaments going on at once. So you won't know exactly, uh, except that you probably do know now that any freed race starting when they do this is is useless for, for stats. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, last question here. So you guys removed um, a, a couple examples of some data points that you removed. The average flame rate was removed from the race pages. And well, we already talked about the date of birth being removed from the profile page. Is uh, that type of stuff going to come back, like the average flame rate? Because somebody else was asking for the flame percentage back at, above each so distance. If, if you click on the horse, click on a horse, it's moved, is what I would say. Uh, it used to be in the drill downs, which was a nice to have. Uh, we moved it down, so scroll down. So fire by distance is still there. Um, we also added class-based graphs. I don't know if you've seen those in the bottom. Down here, um, brother. Yeah, so if you click on class based graphs, this is getting updated a little bit because that's actually uh, so you can do fire by class as well as win rate by class. So that's new, um, uh, and paid win rate by class. Uh, but but if you go up, the data is still here in terms of fire by class. It's just not in the drill down, and and that was again something that unfortunately, if you in the drill down is called the per distance race. So if you scroll down uh, to per distance, scroll up per distance finishes. It used to be in this little section and we 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 moved it to its own bar just because that's we were constrained. 
um, quite candidly. So uh, that unfortunately is not going to come back, but I have found that's a total example of something where I liked it before. And then I went down to the other one and I don't miss it now. Gotcha. Well, thanks for letting us uh, grill you on this rapid fire things people want back. We appreciate it. Uh, all in all, I, I think that there's a lot of awesome new features, though, and, and hopefully people do appreciate those. Uh, before we wrap up here, a couple of things we wanted to bring up uh, matters from the Arbitrage Run Show. We're not going to spin the lending wheel this week. We put Triumph for hours in uh, last week. And how long did Triumph sit in the lending pool, Kevin? I think it's just yeah. really hard for people to, to – there's no sorting through it, right? You just got to keep refreshing, right? right. It, it was there, so we put it in, I think, noonish on like, Eastern time on Friday. And it didn't get picked up until like the morning of Saturday. It was like 18 hours it was, it was there before either it showed up for somebody or somebody cared enough to, to lend like one of the best horses in the game, quite frankly, so. A little surprising, yeah. but it might be to be said. Um, I think there's just too many, there and you it didn't pop up for people. And then they assumed it wasn't there. So maybe we'll bring it back. Uh, we'll probably bring it back when direct lending comes, maybe in a different form. But just wanted to kind of announce that. And then for our lucky maiden seven profit share that we did, wanted to give the quick numbers on that. We had 1.228 Ethereum in entry fees. We had 1.728 Ethereum in winnings. So GMZ stables. Uh, so our total profit was 0.5 Ethereum. GMZ Stables won that raffle last week. So he got 10% of that. We sent him his 0.05 Ethereum. And then the other 18 buyers are going to get a very, very small cut. They might be able to get a, a cup of coffee with this $5 <laughs> that we're going to send them. We wish it was more, but we were close. We, we came in second in overall. Um, and would have, I think there was one time we lost to the eventual winner. Um, by like Zero chaos. 0, 0.01, yeah. And if we had won that race and they had come in second, it would have been the swing we needed to win the overall. But a game of inches. But we'll never complain about making a profit. No, it was fun. And yeah, at least there was some profit to share. And we didn't finish negative. We'll continue to try to do more funds like, fun fun things like these to, to share in our profits and get, give people a reason to root for arbitrage instead of against. But uh, <laughs> until next time, Crypto, where can uh, everybody follow you out there? Are you the, the Haku uh, yeah, Twitter account? Uh, I, yeah, I mean, uh, most of uh, anything related to Haku and Zed is in Haku underscore com. I'm also, I am Charlie Graham.com. So I am Charlie Graham. Uh, I am Charlie Graham. Um, if you want to see me personally, but I don't really tweet as much there. Uh, we tweet more on the Haku com. And I'm I'm on the Discord as Crypto4364. So you guys can, you know, if people have questions, feel free to, to ask. Uh, ask me or Bryce in the Zed Discord. Awesome. Anything else you want to mention here before we wrap up? No, it was so fun to be your first your first guest. I crushed all the previous guests. I just want to tell you right now. Yeah, uh, the best so one. Best one we've ever had. You're also the worst we've ever had. What? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys very much for having me. Hopefully it, it helped answer some of the questions and kind of give a little more context of what we were doing and why. Yeah, it was a blast. Thanks for coming on. You can follow Kevin out on uh, Twitter at Arbitrage Racing. I'm at Zed Diamond Hands. Uh, if you could subscribe to our show, that'd be awesome. Give it a like and we'll catch you all next week.